for University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions. They've traveled three hours to face the 8-2 Arkansas Raiders. We're getting into the holiday spirit, everyone. Fans here were encouraged to wear their best, their most bold, some would say ugly holiday sweaters for today's matchup, and we are all here for it. Hello, everyone. Season's greetings, along with former Maryland and Texas A&M standout Asia Ellison. I'm Brenda Benley, and we decided to join in the fun with our, our sweaters as well. It took three thrift stores to get this, but hey, we're going to have some fun today. And in this matchup, don't be fooled by Pine Bluff's record. They've had a very tough schedule. This is their fifth Power 5 opponent. Arkansas is aware, Asia, and they know how much talent is on the court today. Absolutely. Coach Thorne has done a tremendous job accumulating some Power 5 talent on the roster this season. And some of those players, Brenda, they do have that SEC experience. And, and one of those... Three, one of those players has three years of SEC experience in her final year here at Pine Bluff, Zay Green. Yeah, first stop Tennessee, then Texas A&M. So lots of SEC experience there, but she's a Swiss Army knife, can do just about everything. That's what makes her so invaluable. And the icing on the cake, her height, she stands at 6'2", so she's such a matchup nightmare on both ends of the floor. This is a player that the Razorbacks are really looking to key in on. Yeah, she's leading the team with about 20 points a game. Now, someone with no SEC experience yet, but leading the SEC in scoring is Talia Scott, the freshman. Yeah, we've been spoiled by some remarkable freshmen across the country, but Scott, yes, yeah, she's absolutely one of them, and she is a menace on the offensive end. She has the ability to shoot from deep. She can counter that by attacking the lanes, and one thing that Mike Neighbors said that he's so impressed with about her game is her ability to get to the free throw line. Coach Neighbors and his staff are all decked out in their holiday sweaters, his seventh season at Arkansas. This is their last in-state opponent as they played four inside the boundaries of Arkansas opponent. And then check out the sweater for Don Thornton. Fabulous is what it says on the front when we get a chance to see the front. But she is in her fifth year, and she has done such a remarkable job in the portal, and that's why she's challenged herself with this tough schedule as we get started here. And Arkansas in their white jerseys with the cardinal trim, they'll have the first possession of the game. Poffenbarger out top. Driving into the lane, Spencer, and then it's cleared by Davenport, another player with SEC experience as she played at Georgia a couple of seasons ago. Baseline jumper from Reese. And here's a look at the Arkansas starting five. Scott, the freshman, as we mentioned, she leads the SEC in scoring. Nobody else in the conference is over 20 points a game. You've got Spencer, Daniels in her fifth year, Poffenbarger, and Dowda anchoring it inside. And After the miss. Spencer. Sorry, you saw Spencer take that quick shot, getting into the starting lineup here for... Pine Bluff, you got Zay Green, Jalissa Reese, Kariya Beck, uh, Kayla Walker, and Mo Davenport. But I was talking about Spencer. They're going to take a lot of quick shots, but that's what Mike Neighbors wants. He wants quick shots in their offense. Offensive rebound for the Golden Lions. Green goes inside, up top. No, that one doesn't go for Reese. And then a whistle and a foul will be on Pine Bluff as Spencer hits the floor hard. That's just great effort there. Spencer, look at the leaps, and she, do, she does a great job boxing out. She's got that length. Came down a little hard, but great effort there on the glass. Foul was on five. Jalissa Reese, as we're still looking for our first score of the game. Daniels averaging oh, just over 11 points a game this year. Throws that one away. Good steal. Reese out in front of everybody to score. You got to be careful. This is a very aggressive Pine Bluff team in their defense. That's where they hang their hats. And Mike Neighbors told us they like to play from the three point line, the free throw line, but they got to do a clean, a clean offense playing efficiently. Davenport with that rebound. You're absolutely right, Asia. That's what this team is known for. And that's why they tested themselves so much this year against Power Five competition. They want to get out and disrupt with their defense.
Shot clock under 10. Driving, nice block inside by Dowda. And, and Davenport, like yeah, looked like she may have hit her head. Daniels driving, first basket of the game for Arkansas. You know, what I love about Daniels is her balanced attack, her awareness. She knows when she needs to create for others in a time when they need a score. She's the one that will step up and do it. Kayla Walker off to Reese. Kayla Walker, number 25, runs the point guard as well as Zay Green. And she's really earned her spot for that this year. We'll talk more about that as Arkansas pushes ahead. Poffenbarger. Take some contact, and there's Davenport. May have gotten away with the travel. Another rebound for her. Poffenbarger is going to have the ball taken away, and then the Pine Bluff player on the floor, Beck, is on the inline, so it will be Arkansas basketball. There's that fabulous sweater that coach Thornton is wearing <laughs> here's the power five lineup they went to Oregon State and Oregon they played Mississippi State really tough and also Clemson losses in all of those but coach Thornton talked about what they learned in those matchups yeah very impressive matchups there and I think you know consistency amongst all the players knocking down shots you know, some things that they have to key and that they have to clean up. But I think having those having those matchups and then coming into this one, I think, is really something that will um, add to their benefit. Maya Pete into the game, the tough defense there, and then watch the block shot. From the corner, Scott missing. Good offensive rebound. Tough shot for Dowda, who misses. Slicing through the defenders, great drive to the basket for Pine Bluff, and that will send Zay Green to the free throw line. And this is exactly what Zay Green does, attacking the basket. You got to get a stop on her. She's just too good. I've got home internet from T-Mobile. It only costs 50 bucks at T. There's some connected to Arkansas as well. Corey Beck was the point guard, the starting point guard in the 1994 Arkansas Men's Basketball National Championship as he was congratulated by then President Bill Clinton. But he is the father of Kariah Beck, number 15 for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Yeah, what a luxury to have, you know, a father that played exceptionally well at the college level, but at the professional level as well, when you talk about the pedigree, passing down those genes, as well as, you know, giving some coaching tidbits. I'm sure he's in the stands. I'm sure he's calling her after every game. I know exactly what that's like, but you know, it's an added advantage more so. Yeah, he actually is in the Fayetteville area, has a business there. So he is around uh, in, in Bud Walton Arena a lot, as you see the 94 championship up in the banners, but of course you know that, Asia. Your father played in the NBA against Corey Becker. Exactly. Or excuse me, Corey Beck. Yes. If people don't know, your father, never nervous, Purvis Ellison, <laughs> correct? Playing 11 years in the NBA. So you, you know what that's like having your father having a successful career and giving you all that advice. Exactly. All throughout high school and college, I'm getting phone calls after every game, talking at meals. That's what this conversation is at the dinner table. But, you know, it's honestly a blessing, and just I'm very fortunate to have him as a mentor. Well, Green finished her three-point play to give Arkansas Pine Bluff the early three-point lead, and again, igniting the break. They miss on that shot, but... They, they are not going to be slow down the court. They are going to push tempo as much as possible. Exactly, and I'm actually pretty impressed with the intensity. Not surprised, but very impressed with the intensity that Pine Bluff is playing. Really throwing Arkansas off offensively with their defense. Don Thornton in her fifth year as this team, Arkansas Pine Bluff, is preseason picked third to finish in the SWAC conference. 
as Talia Scott, uh, Talia Scott is fouled and will get a chance to go to the free throw line. She was excited about having this opportunity to really measure how well her team would play and said this is just such a good rivalry. Coach Neighbors likes to play against us. We like to play against Arkansas. Talia Scott at the line, the freshman out of Orange Park, Florida, already this year. She has seven games over 20 points, four straight coming into this game. Green blocked inside. Great block, and it will allow Arkansas to push Temple. Daniels slips but is fouled. This time she is fouled by Reese. That'll be her second foul. That starts with a great effort defensively by Arkansas. They're a team that's always, we know about their offense, right? But when you talk about their defense, they play together as a team. Everything is team defense. The help side's always there. They're always communicating. And that was a great example of that on that last possession. Dee Dee Shepard checks in for Jalissa Reese. Reese going to the bench with those two fouls. Court spacing opens up that left lane, but a good block and then a late whistle will send Michaela Daniels to the free throw line. Let's have another look at it. Daniels on the drive here. I mean, more often than not, there was a little body there, but more often than not, when you're swiping down like that with the arm, they're going to call it. So Dee Dee Shepard picked up her first foul. Well, next Sunday, it's a women's basketball doubleheader here on the SEC Network. First at 1 Eastern, noon Central, UL Monroe takes on Alabama and Tuscaloosa. That's followed by, at 3 o'clock Eastern, Northwestern State and 7th-ranked LSU from Baton Rouge. Both games can be seen right here on the SEC Network. Looking forward to these wrapping up these non-conference games as we get ready for SEC play. It's really been interesting how things have played out and teams getting ready and preparing for conference. Talia Scott I mean, out to Spencer. How about the non-conference schedule though, Brenda? Lots of March action happening in November. I mean, I love to see it. It's, it's helping the women's game grow so much and, you know, makes everyone even more excited for SEC play. That one is out of bounds as it goes over the backboard. We've already seen a few missed easy shots. This Arkansas team is, is typically good at getting to the rim, and they just are coming off a game where they beat Louisiana Tech 100 to 60 with a lot of shots at the rim. Better patience that time, not getting the shot block. Scott able to score it. Exactly, right on the money, uh, Brenda. You have to have patience. You have a team like Pine Bluff. They like to get out in the passing lanes. They like to block shots. You know, they like to play very aggressive on their defense. So you have to stay fully shot fake, pass fake. Scott did a great job of that. And Scott commits the travel. Let's go back and look at the how open Scott is and the patience she shows. Exactly. The freshman not looking so much like a freshman here. She sees how Pine Bluff is playing defense, so she shot fakes, gathers herself, and gets the easy bucket. But the Golden Lions have to get their offense going. Just one of their last ten from the floor. Beck stops that cold streak with a nice mid-range jumper. Spencer top of the key. And it'll go the way of the... Golden Lions. Coach Neighbors talked about this schedule that last year, you know, they started 13 and 0 in non-conference play. He said they kind of ramped up and had their hardest teams right before SEC Number 30, 
Coach Neighbors talked about this schedule that last year, you know, they started 13-0 and in non-conference play. He said they kind of ramped up and had their hardest teams right before SEC play, and they didn't really have time to make adjustments and improve going into conference play as Poffenbarger gets the block shot inside. But this year, kind of their, their toughest games were late November, early December, so that they can have some time to regroup and improve in time for SEC play as Poffenbarger, a couple of blocks on this defensive possession. Spencer misses. Two on two and challenging inside. Poffenbarger made it tough. No foul called. Zay Green, no. And Poffenbarger with another rebound. She had a 23 rebound effort in their win over Florida State earlier this year. And that's her foundation, her defense, her rebounding. She has that size. She can play positions one through five, almost like a point forward, if you will. But again, her foundation, rebounding, defense, that's what she starts with, and then she lets the offense come to her, and that's what I love so much about her game. Three-pointer, long peak there for the rebound and put back. Poffenbarger. Boy, it's been tough from three-point range for Arkansas. They love to shoot the threes, but they're 2 of 15 here in the first quarter. Yeah, I think for Arkansas, next step is just continuing to attack the basket to get to the free throw line. And 2 of 15 overall, but you saw the 0 for 4 from three-point range. Just neither team finding a rhythm here in the early going. Davenport back into the game for Pine Bluff. And then you see Keats, who is a versatile player off the bench. And so the foul will send Arkansas to the free throw line. Scott and the whole team very good at getting to the free throw line this year and that's a big part of Mike Neighbors success number one the method to their success they want to get to the free throw line they want to make more layups and number three they want to shoot the three pointers and as you look at their their numbers fifth in the SEC in free throw percentage but they get to the free throw line a lot yeah absolutely that's that counterattack. You shoot it from the outside, it opens up the lanes, you drive it, and same vice versa. Davenport long. All tied up with under a minute and a half to play in the first quarter. Scott hits it. First three-pointer of the game for either team. Good rebound on the backside. Can't get that one to go. Davenport is fouled and will go to the line. Good work by Rittenberry, number four, into the lineup for Pine Bluff, but they draw the foul on Dowda inside. Absolutely right place, right time, and I love the effort here on the offensive glass. They didn't get the make, but then another rebound by Davenport. She puts it up and gets fouled, and... You know, you talk about the Golden Lions. They're getting the shots that they want. They're just not going in right now, so they got to keep shooting it. Mo Davenport makes the first. The 6'5 senior out of Troy, Alabama, was preseason picked all SWAC second team. She played for Pine, Pine uh, Bluff last year, but her sophomore season was spent at Georgia. She started her career at Rutgers, so she is familiar with the SEC. Long three goes down for Scott. Back-to-back -back three pointers for Talia Scott. Yeah, when Scott gets hot, she gets hot. You gotta know where she is on the floor. Talia Scott has scored the last 10 points for Arkansas. 
Top of the key, first three-pointer for the Golden Lions, D.D. Shepard. And the shot clock is off as Arkansas will go for the last shot of the quarter. To Leah Scott changing direction and commits the offensive foul as three Golden Lions were waiting in the paint for her. And for UAPD number 14, and Asia Robinson. Three point two seconds remaining in the quarter. Pine Bluff will not get up the attempt. And an entertaining first quarter as Arkansas takes the lead into the second, 15 to 14. We are in for a treat. The freshman Phenom Scott getting hot from beyond the arc. She just has such the advantage when you talk about length on the defensive end. She's got five rebounds, all defensive rebounds and two blocked shots. So a family affair here, but Sailor said, listen, I'm going to play some defense. She is number one in the SEC in rebounding and in defensive rebound. So she cleans the glass. We talked about that she set an Arkansas record against Florida State with 23 rebounds in that upset win. They knocked off Florida State. The only two losses for Arkansas this year, UCLA and Marquette, but a big win over Florida State when Poffenbarger had that, that record-setting rebounding effort. And that one gets away from Davenport. It will be Arkansas basketball. But I know Sailor is so proud of her older brother, Reese. They're, they're going, they played in a dome last night in Idaho, but they're not going to be so lucky going to South Dakota State, <laughs> the defending champion. No dome there. It's going to be a little chilly, South Dakota State. <laughs> and stepping on the sideline is... Spencer. Spencer has not scored yet. Scott leading the way. Talia Scott has 12 of the 15 points so far for Arkansas. Daniels has the other three. Green sizing it up. Pulls up for the jumper. And Spencer there for the rebound. Great defensive possession there by Arkansas, forcing Green to take a tough two, not allowing her anything down low at the basket. Michaela Daniels picking up her pivot foot too quickly and committing the travel. Six turnovers already for Arkansas, zero for Pine Bluff so far. That's got to be a, a big part of the reason they're playing so close right now. No, absolutely. This is an Arkansas team that's really big on their efficiency. They play quick basketball, but they have to do it efficiently in order to be successful in the offensive end. A tough shot for Green going all the way to the basket, giving Pine Bluff a one-point lead. And a whistle, a foul called on Pine Bluff. Zay Green, one thing that she's really good at is attacking downhill. Just such a strong body and you look, you see that first step. It's so explosive. She gets her shoulder down and goes right in there, able to take the contact and get the finish. And another turnover for Arkansas. You know, Mike Neighbors is really into the analytics, and I know he's going to be all over this one. This Pine Bluff team has has 12 more field goal attempts than Arkansas so far because of the turnovers for Arkansas and zero until that one for Pine Bluff. Yeah, not going to be happy about that at all. When you're fishing with the basketball, when you don't turn over, when you get on the glass, like you said, Brenna, that provides more possessions for you, and that's what Arkansas, that's what they hang their hats on, having the most possessions per game. Scott, how about that? From the edge of the state of Arkansas on the court.
three three-pointers for Talia Scott, the leading scorer in the SEC. And Poffenbarger with some more defense. She, she got the ball, but she looked like she may have gotten hit in the face coming down. And I thought in that last possession, they should have hit Davenport early on that initial post entry on the side besides waiting for the ball screen and roll. And another block, we, we noticed that Zay Green ran off the court. We will keep an eye on what's going on with that as it has gotten a little physical out here. And that's down the hallway back toward the locker room. So hopefully she's okay. Draw pass. Kariah Beck with that bucket. Scott for another. Yes! Five three-pointers in the first half for Talia Scott. I know Coach Thornton is like, do y'all see Scott? All eyes on Scott. You got to know where she is on the floor. Scott because Scott is hot. The freshman getting it done from three. but for others um, I like to shoot the ball so that's another reason why I came here um, and I like to give it all on defense sacrifice my body for my team and do whatever it takes to win well we have seen her offense on full display last year in high school she led the country in scoring she came to play for Mike neighbors so she had the green light to light it up and it has been the greenest of green lights Asia and can you see those numbers there? The field goal, six for nine from the field, five for seven from the three, and then she's perfect, four for four at the free throw line. So she's not just jacking up all these shots, she's doing it efficiently, and that's exactly what Mike Neighbor needs. Someone that's scoring, but doing it with efficiency. And how about the freshmen that do that? Yeah, she had 29 points in their win over Louisiana Tech, and she was 12 of 16 from the field. So that's not high volume, that's only 16 <laughs> shot attempts and she was five of eight from three-point range. And you saw her numbers to show her efficiency today. So a timeout was called by Pine Bluff. They're down six with 5.55 to go in the second quarter. Three-point attempt off the mark, but an offensive rebound put back for the Golden Lions. Yeah, but that's how you can ship away, keep being aggressive on the glass, get the 50-50 balls. Dowda with the mid-range jumper from the SEC logo, but she was fouled and will go to the free throw line. The foul was on Mo Davenport. Well, Saturday night here on the SEC Network, be sure to catch the men in action at the Hall of Fame Series San Antonio. The Cal Golden Bears and Ole Miss Rebels will square off at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central from the Frost Bank Center in San Antonio. Both free throws made on the other end, but the Golden Lions with the answer in the paint from Jalissa Reese. That's her second putback off the off the glass. Great effort there by Reese. When those free throws were made by Dowda on the last trip down the court, that's the first time anybody for Arkansas has scored besides Scott since Daniel scored with 513 left in the first quarter. Green is fouled on her way to the basket. Spencer committing the foul. Spencer decides she doesn't want to wear that mask anymore. And Green will go to the free throw line. And yeah, it started with the defense. Lots of length on the defensive end for the Golden Lions that led to that play there in transition. So Green leads this team in scoring almost 20 points per game leads them in rebounding over seven rebounds a game 
with that free throw, she's got six points and five rebounds today, and she's keeping Pine Bluff close as she draws within two with those free throws. It was the second foul on Samara Spencer, and you see she's going to be attended to off the court. Three-point basket, this time for Daniels. Well, one luxury for Mike Neighbors, when a player goes out, all those three, those uh, players, especially the guards around the perimeter, they all are interchangeable. They can all play one of those spots. They can handle the ball. They can create. They can score. So not missing much. When one person goes out, next person comes in and steps up. Carly Keats, number 23, is in for Spencer right now. And she is one of those players that's very versatile. She can spell any of the three guards for Mike Neighbors. Scott keeps her dribble alive. Nice pass to Dowda. The ball just slips away from her inside. Walker uh, traveled first. Boy, she went to the floor hard. Well, gets called for the traveled here. Yeah, and a little bump there by Sky got her off balance, and she fell. She hit the floor pretty hard, but the travel again was called early on. The senior is from Alexander, Arkansas. She was actually the the third string point guard on the depth chart, but their starting point guard is suspended, Karina Carter, and then Tia Morgan broke a finger, so Walker has had to step in. Now others are getting into the three-point shooting arc. You saw Daniels the last time down. Now Poffenbarger hits that three. And that's dangerous. That's one thing you don't want to see. You don't want to see Scott doing it all, but you don't want to see the rest of the players come into the three-point party. Pete hits the side of the backboard, gets her own rebound, and Poffenbarger deflects it. Scott kicking out. Daniels lining up for three. And now it's raining threes from all over the court. Eight of 12 from beyond the arc for the Razorbacks. Yeah, that's the bread and butter. That's how Arkansas wants to get their score. They want to get the stop, but they want to push tempo, push it up the court and kick out. Look out for those spotters on the three-point line. Green says, we're not going away. We're going to stay in this ball game. But what a run for Arkansas as it was only Scott doing the scoring when we went to our last timeout. And everybody's gotten into the action. A turnover, though, leads to Pine Bluff jumper. No, and Poffenbarger there for another rebound she's got six on the day top of the key poffenbarger got it nine three-pointers that matches the average for arkansas on the season as they average 9.7 per game and this is only the first half and poffenbarger she does such a great job of that when a guard's penetrating and probing she comes from behind and spots up and really finds those open spots beyond the arc Dowda with good defense. Daniels pushing in traffic. Poffenbarger looking for a screen. Slicing to the rim, but back irons it, and here come the Golden Lions. Three-point look, no. How about the hustle from Poffenbarger, who missed the shot on the other end but was there for the rebound on this end as Scott misses that three-point attempt. That ends, that miss by Scott ended a streak of nine straight three-pointers made for Arkansas. And Pine Bluff, Asia, they are so tough. And this is where that tough schedule comes into play. They aren't just giving up here because Arkansas has made this run. Exactly. They've seen what they can do against some of these top opponents that they've played. And some of those matchups, Coach said, hey, we really could have won that. So a chip on their shoulder, especially coming into this matchup, as you said, Brenda. Dowda hit the last bucket. So... 
Now all of the starters for Arkansas except Spencer have scored and Spencer had to walk off the court. We'll see if we can get a report on how she's doing. Dowda with her second foul on that whistle. See Spencer having to wear that mask on her face. When she committed the foul earlier against Green, she took the face mask off as if it were bothering her. And now you can see she is sitting on the, the very end of the bench waiting for halftime. About a 10 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Walker rises up and then she is fouled on the shot. A chance now for Pine Bluff to draw within single digits before the half. Yeah, not a smart foul there at all on Arkansas's behalf, but great, great shot find. And so the foul is on Scott. That's her second. The officials for today, Brian Hall, Brenda Pantoja, and Corey Chambers. Sending Kayla Walker, the 5'5 senior, to the free throw line. And she made the first, hit the second. Just a 62% free throw shooter on the year. She took off last year to focus on her engineering degree, but she has been a real bright spot for Pine Bluff this year. 10 seconds remaining in the half. Scott scoops it up and makes it a 10 point lead at the half. Talia Scott going to the halftime locker room, scoring 23 of the 42 points for Arkansas, she's seven of 11 from the field, five of eight from the three point line, and four of four from the free throw stripe. Arkansas leading by 10 here at Bud Walton Arena at the half over the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff where it's a lot of holiday spirit in the air here in Fayetteville. where we're having a lot of fun here with a, a festive holiday spirit and Santa has been delivering the three-pointers as Arkansas leads Arkansas Pine Bluff by 10 at the half. Thanks for joining us once again along with Asia Ellison. I'm Brenda Van Lingen and we know Arkansas is known for hitting their three-point shots. They missed their first four of the game but they hit nine in a row after that. What a display of three-point shooting for the Razorbacks. Yeah, absolutely. It didn't take too long for them to get hot. It's raining threes, and again, it started with Talia Scott, the phenomenal freshman. She hit a few of them to get them that spark, and then the rest of the gang, they said, hey, I want to join in on the fun. Look at that ball movement. It's so smooth. Daniel's a perfect two for two. And then Sailor, she won the step in as well. Get that shot. She does a great job finding that open for the three, and you know, this Arkansas team, they're just so great. And when they get hot, they are super deadly and dangerous. So for the Golden Lions, the key here is they got to run them off the three-point line, find them, find the three-pointer spot, uh, three-point shooter spotted up off the offensive glass. You can see the summary for the first half with Scott leading the way with 23 points. She had 21 of their 24 points at one point. And then the rest of the team came through green with 12 for UAPB and the turnovers early were a problem from Arkansas, but they started taking care of the ball better later on. Yeah, absolutely. They take care of the ball, great things happen. And for the Golden Lions, they you know, as you saw there, doing a tremendous job. You know, I think the key here is defensively. I think offensively they're getting the looks they want. They can just knock down a few more shots. But again, defensively run Arkansas off the three-point line because if you let them get it too hot, that's going to extend the lead. You know, early in the year, Scott coming 
as a freshman the first five games. She shot just four of her first 28 in the first five games. But since then, she's made 23 of 55, which is 42%. You can see what she's done just over the last six quarters of play. Yeah, absolutely. Confidence and repetition. You know, that's what it takes in practice, in game. She's got those reps. She's building up her confidence. And perfect that that's done now leading into conference play. Pine Bluff with the first possession. That one gets knocked out of bounds by Poffenbarger. So the Golden Lions will have the ball with 16 on the shot clock. So Arkansas led by Scott in the first half with 23, but Daniels had nine. Poffenbarger had six points. Pine Bluff Golden Lions led by Green, the only player in double figures with 12 points. And it goes off of UAPB. Just a good look there at Kariah Beck. Her dad played here for the Razorbacks on the 1994 men's Final Four team. And we've we've spotted him in the audience tonight. Actually, was on the, uh, the halftime radio show for the Arkansas Pine Bluff uh, broadcast of the game. So I'm sure it's a little odd for people here in Fayetteville to see him in a Pine Bluff sweatshirt. Dowda with the carom puts it in. Here's a look at proud dad Corey Beck. Again leading Arkansas to the 94 men's final four championship and now Kariah playing for Arkansas Pine Bluff. And the Razorbacks did a great job defending that ball screen. They're not going to let Zay Green get anything, anything easy going downhill. That one got kicked off the foot of Green into the hands of Daniels, who sets things up. Daniels, the grad student, they didn't know if she would be coming back this year. She has had such a tremendous career, but decided to use that COVID year for one more season with the Razorbacks. And, and Mike Neighbors said, your, your legacy is cemented here. But now what are you going to do in this last year to make sure that the, the next generation of players are ready, that Samara Spencer and that Talia Scott are ready to lead that locker room when you leave. Absolutely, and she's a tremendous leader. She's the more you know seasoned player on the team. She knows his system in and out, and Mike Neighbors said she's the, her role has changed. She's pushing the ball more. She's the one that can push that pace and do it officially and set that tone. So Zay Green hit the three-pointer on the other end, and then Dowda committed the foul on the illegal screen. So this is not a, a game, Asia, that Arkansas can just coast through this this Arkansas Pine Bluff team is a team that will continue to battle throughout yeah coach Thorne she said they're gritty they fight they play every game like they have nothing to lose and they're coming into this game you know knowing and thinking as they should that they can get the win floater in the paint good rebound by Davenport and stick back Great job with the stop here in transition by the Golden Lions. Christina Sanchez, number 10, into the game for Arkansas. That one slips out of her hands, but fortunate for Arkansas, it's off of Pine Bluff. Let's take a look at that rebound and put back on the other end. Yeah, Davenport, such great size. Gets the body in there, boxes Sailor out, and gets a good, uh, good second chance opportunity. A foul called away from the ball on the rebound on Pine Bluff. I believe it's on Beck, her second foul, yes. And Brenda Pantoja, one of our officials, asking for the... Uh, Floor to be wiped up there under the basket. Make sure it's safe. Everybody's got a festive holiday shirt on, even, even those wiping up the floor. Daniels kicks back to Poffenbarger. Out to Scott in the corner. And she hits her sixth three-pointer of the game. 
And I love that decision by Poppin Barker. She's hit a couple threes herself, but not forcing it up. She attacks, draws the defense in, and, find, and finds her open teammate there in the corner. And you have another look at it. Great read. Get him off balance. Kick it out. And who better to kick it out to than Scott, the freshman phenom who's just been knocking down threes all game. And that's one thing Co Coach Neighbors talked to us about, that, that uh, Scott had the ball in her hands a lot in high school. Now she's learning that she can make a lot of shots when her teammates set her up and drive into the paint like that. First free throw is made. Well, the next SEC story premieres on Wednesday night. Bart Starr, America's quarterback, is the life story of one of the greatest quarterbacks in football history. He played for Alabama under legendary head coach Bear Bryant, of course. The, the documentary cro chronicles the highs and lows that he endured. Catch the premiere at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. I know Coach Neighbors is a, a historian. He's got a lot of favorite movies and books and just a, a lot of collectible items that he has. I'm sure he he was a fan as a lot of people of his, my generation, Bart Starr, uh, made a big impact on a lot of sports fans. Beck driving in, tough shot, as she was fouled and will have an and one opportunity. Yeah, Beck, looking like her daddy out there. We saw in those highlights before, but what a strong move, and I love that she got her body together. Have another look at it here. Strong move gathered. I love it, and the hang time there. That's what drew the foul. Mm -hmm. A little flex at the end. She transferred from Memphis. We've already talked about Zay Green transferred from Texas A&M after playing a couple of years at Tennessee. Reese transferred from Troy. Dan Davenport started or had, had some time at Georgia as Daniels hits a layup. But just a, a lot of transfers coming into this program at Pine Bluff. And, and they want to make some noise in the SWAC. And you can see how tough they are uh, just with how they're playing against Arkansas today. And they absolutely can. I mean, they got Jackson State's a great team. We can talk about the SWAT conference, but the Golden Lions, they're really making a statement, and you could see that in all the games that they've had so far and the fight they've put up. And Green catches that one in stride to draw within eight. And then a whistle and a foul on Pine Bluff. And you can't take your foot off the gas here with the Golden Lions, and especially with this kid right here, Zay Green. She is a motor. She's going to get it done. The defense to transition. 17 points now for Zay Green as the foul was called on Walker for Pine Bluff. Scott from the corner. One of her rare misses from three-point range is now she's 6 of 10. Just ridiculous from three-point range. Zay Green, rebound, puts it in, and the Golden Lions are not going away. Daniels out to the corner. Good look from Keats, but she can't get it to go, and just off the hands of Walker. When you look at the last couple possessions, it just shows how what Arkansas's offense is all about. You really have to pick and choose your battles. They were lighting up from three, and then Daniels got a couple possessions where she got in the lane, so now they're focusing on the lanes, sucking in, and then it opens the three back up. Walker will take a seat for a moment. Carly Keats, the sophomore who transferred from Jones College. Poffenbarger drains that one. Yeah, simple pick and pop, but that has to be defended a lot better. And so and does that quick transition play. Yeah, quickly to the other end. Robinson, the big strong post from Anchorage, Alaska, scores that one. Daniels sets things up with the clock, shot clock winding down under 10. Daniels probing, looking. And Poffenbarger with the board. She's got eight. 
Nice backdoor cut from Scott. Beautiful delivery from Spencer. Yeah, excellent read from the freshman. And timeout called by the Golden Lions. Well, it's been back and forth in Pine Bluff. They're not going anywhere. Got a bucket here, but then on the other end, the Razorbacks continuing to get things done. To reach out to their community, they are getting involved with a community center and feeding the homeless, but they've also adopted Friendship Aspire Academy and they're reading to them and they're having fun Fridays and just trying to be a real positive influence in their community. And they've been a, a real positive influence here in this game in Fayetteville. We've talked about how they've tested themselves this year. This is the fifth Power 5 team they are playing in, in Asia. They, they are keeping this game close within nine points now with 4.15 remaining. Can't hit that three, but they get another rebound, and that one gets Arkansas. away, though. They, they've really been able to get the ball to the paint and outscoring Arkansas in the paint by 10 points. As we have another break in the action, we'll come back with more of that. 4.07 remaining in the third quarter, Arkansas up by nine. So we're down 34 to zero. Winning will be tough. That's why I brought in the ease. In Fayetteville, Arkansas, as the Razorbacks leading the Golden Lions 56 to 47. As we take a look at the, the top two scorers in this game, Zay Green and Scott having tremendous days as we expected. Zay Green was actually all SEC freshman team in her first year at Tennessee. But then she endured some injuries. She transferred to A&M and then was out all of last year. But we're, we're seeing the, the promise that she showed in her freshman year and now going against a, a Scott, a tremendous freshman here in the SEC. Yeah, absolutely. Both prolific scorers. You know, I've known Zay Green for a, a long time. Very talented player. Again, stricken with injury. And now, you know, she's on a team, a very polished Arkansas Pine Bluff team. She has more players surrounding her. She's able to do a lot more. And like you said, we're really seeing her game shine through this season. 60 points over the last three games for Zay Green. And, and we've mentioned how Don Thornton, the head coach from Arkansas Pine Bluff, has really challenged her team in the non-conference schedule. They want to you know, have a real impact and, and, and win a SWAC championship. And this team is, is being put together in a way that they've got a real shot at that. Three seconds on the shot clock. Poffenbarger leaning back. Can't get that one to go. Poffenbarger's been pretty good today, though. Three of now seven from three-point range. She's got nine points and eight rebounds as she is approaching another double-double. Beck kicks out. Nice pass out to set up the three-pointer from Dee Dee Shepard. Yeah, she got me with the pass. I didn't know where it was going at first. That was a great find. Pine Bluff within six points now with three minutes to go in the third quarter. Way out top. Scott can't get that one to go. And then Pine Bluff will pick up the foul back threw Spencer to the floor on the block out. But let's let's take a look at that great pass back for the shot. Yeah, great kick out here behind the back. I don't know where it was going, but that's a great look for spot up. Giving Arkansas a good taste of their own medicine and then have another look at the foul here. Yeah, an obvious push there. And that Samara Spencer cleared. hitting the, yeah. So in the bonus, Spencer goes to the free throw line, misses the first, quickly gets it up out of her hands and makes the second to put Arkansas up seven. 
Yeah, for the Golden Lions, Brenda, they don't want to have that three-point shootout with the Razorbacks. I think the key here is to continue. If you have open looks like this, you got them. But continue to attack the paint, but then defensively run the Razorbacks off the three-point line. Win that, make it a paint game, and win that paint battle. Route scoring them 26-16 to 16 in the paint. And a foul on the way to the basket, so Scott will have a trip to the free throw line. The Razorbacks made nine three-pointers in the first half. They've hit a couple of them here in the second half. And Scott is leading the way for the Razorbacks with 28 points on the day. Scott has already gotten to the line more in her freshman campaign, the first 10 games, than Kelsey Plum did. Kelsey Plum, of course, the all-time NCAA scoring leader who played for Mike Neighbors. When we asked him for a, a comparison, he said that Talia Scott is already has already gone to the free throw line many more times than Kelsey Plum had at her time. So the fact that she is learning to get to the free throw line to complement the other things she does on the court is a big part of her game. Exactly, and that's quite a player to be compared to, especially this early on in her freshman year, and especially in an area as getting to the free throw line. So we'll take a we'll, we'll take a look at those numbers. As I mean, that's one of the reasons that Talia Scott came to play for Mike Neighbors is he. Sh she knew what kind of system that he runs and that she would have the green light and uh and that he coached kelsey plum and so she she embraces those kind of comparisons <laughs> we're gonna have a little test there in our uh <laughs> our graphic we'll we'll have to wait for a moment now we're really curious <laughs> Poffenbarger swats it away, but right there for the carom is Courtney Rittenberry. Spencer kind of throws the ball up at the basket as she takes some contact. Arkansas can draw within one with a three, and they do. Big three-point shot for Beck. Yeah, great stop, great pro by uh, Zay Green to get it out to Beck, who is a cable. She can knock down that shot. Beck now in double figures for the Golden Lions, and the miss there, this would allow Pine Bluff, with under a minute to play in the third quarter, to potentially take the lead. This is the closest they've been since 8.50 remaining in the second quarter, and Pete is fouled on the shot attempt, and she'll go to the free throw line. And this is how they got him within one. Zay Green, great find to Beck, who spots up and knocks it down. Coach loving it. I'm telling you, these Golden Lions, they're not going anywhere, Brenda. Fabulous is what her <laughs> sweater says, and that's how her team has played today as Maya Pete misses the first free throw. The 6'6 senior out of Chandler, Arizona, is from a very athletic family. Her brother plays left guard for the New Orleans Saints. Her father played 12 years in the NFL. There's a good picture of her and her brother. But she was not able to connect on those free throws. She has done so much in her career to improve her fitness level, her nutrition. She has really transformed herself over the course of her career. And she is a, a big presence inside for Pine Bluff. And for Arkansas, number 10, Christina Sanchez, her Replacing number two, Sierra Spencer. At the line, shooting two shots for Arkansas. As Pete takes a seat for Pine Bluff, and on the other side, Christina Sanchez comes in for Arkansas. As that foul was on Rittenberry, sending Poffenbarger to the line. And she connects on the second of two.
And there's still a little difference between the game clock and shot clock, about four seconds difference. So Pine Bluff may potentially get a possession here. Scott is fouled by Zay Green, and since they're in the bonus, Arkansas will go to the free throw line. And I love that, the two prolific scores going at it. And I love Scott, the freshman, so fearless. She knows she's going up against a vet, a seasoned vet at that. And she's not scared at all. She says, listen, everybody's spaced out. I'm going to go to work. Scott, five of six from the free throw line so far today. Well, Wednesday night here on the SEC Network and also on ESPN, we'll have the exclusive reveal of next year's SEC football schedule. They'll have a complete breakdown of each school and the top matchups for 2024. That's Wednesday night at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Of course, Texas and Oklahoma being added, and so it will be interesting to see how the schedule is going to shake out. Top of the key, three-pointer for UAPB draws us within one, and we've got an exciting fourth quarter up ahead as the Golden Lions have drawn this game within one. Yeah, the Golden Lions not going anywhere at all. How about it? Knocking it down from the arc. We got a good one coming up. On a curve. Mike Neighbors does it's pretty darn special. And he actually did this for me. You see my name at the bottom and with their mission control theme, he writes a personal note to every person on the team, encouraging them something specific that he wants them to focus on or think about going into the game. He even somehow Googled the high school that I went to, which is pretty impressive, <laughs> and, and encouraged me on and, and Asia and I on continuing to promote the game of women's basketball and, and doing what we love doing. But he writes that note, Asia, a personal note, handwritten note to every one of his players before each game. Absolutely, and it means so much as a player to have that personal relationship with your coach who makes the time and effort to do that. And I think that's important for a team where you have so much talent. These players are so versatile. They can play different roles. It's important to know your role, which can change in and out the game throughout the season. So to go from game to game and to receive those notes, I mean, you know, great for the Razorbacks. And it just shows how who Mike Neighbors is as a person and a coach as well. Well, as we start the fourth quarter, Arkansas hanging on to a one-point lead. Talia Scott leading the way with 31 points, the rest of the team with 30. And Samara Spencer misses on that attempt. And, and what does this Arkansas team need to do to just kind of settle down? Because Pine Bluff is knocking on the door right here. Absolutely. They just have to settle down, as you were saying. You know, stay poised. I think the defense of the Golden Lions has really trickled them in. Same with their spurts that they've been getting on the offensive end. And for the Golden Lions, I'm actually really impressed with their balance attack. They've been getting it into the paint, but they've also been getting great looks from beyond the arc. Not four shots, but great looks. Poffenbarger back irons it. And a big rebound for the Golden Lions. Green picks up her dribble. Three-pointer on the way. No, Rittenberry can't corral it. And Daniels finds Poffenbarger on the save. So a couple of empty possessions for each team here to start the fourth quarter. Scott attacks past Davenport, misses. Green has it blocked by Poffenbarger, but comes right back and scores it. And that's the first lead for the Golden Lions since it was 16-15 at the 8.50 mark in the second quarter. What a comeback for Pine Bluff. Yeah, I mean, you got to give the credit to Poffenbarger, right? She gets great position, gets the block here, but Zay Green, instead of giving it up, gets back in the possession. Great move, gathers herself and scores. I mean... That's just great effort, and you see that not just with Zay Green, but all around with this entire team, that effort, that tenacity, staying in it, and that's why they have the lead now. So now the pressure on Arkansas. They've been playing with the lead the entire second half, 
and Pine Bluff has climbed their way back in. 28 points scored by the Golden Lions in the third quarter to draw this one close, but how about Spencer coming through? That's her first made basket, the first made field goal of the game for Spencer, and then she gets on the floor to get her, get her hands on this one. And I mean, this is a two-way player. A two-way player that gets it done on both ends of the floor. She gets it out here after losing the ball, gathers herself, cash, knocks it down, and then on the other end, gets the defensive stop. And Green is doubled over on the sideline. Coach Thornton right beside her. Let's take a look back at what happened there as she and Spencer went to the floor. It was hard to see there, but I know she was covering her face, so she might have gotten hit in the face at some point when hustling and going after the ball. We're going to take a break. Arkansas with the two-point lead here in the fourth quarter. When you live in era Spencer is defending and she tries to swipe around behind Zay Green to get the ball but comes up and hits her in the face so the officials are taking a look at that and then Zay Green had to go over and, and reinsert her contact lens it appears using the phone on the sideline. Officials Brian Hall and Brenda Pantoja, as well as Corey Chambers, are officials. So there is is not upgraded. They, they were not an, an intentional foul. Was are taking a look at that and then Zay Green had to go over and, and reinsert her contact lens it appears using the phone on the sideline. The officials Brian Hall and Brenda Pantoja as well as Corey Chambers are officials so there is is not upgraded the, they were not an, an intentional foul was not called and it seems that seems like the right call asia right it looked like spencer was just trying to tap the ball out from behind and it was inadvertent yeah absolutely an honest swipe at the ball so pine bluff will inbound it down two here in the fourth quarter and a nice job getting up in the air courtney rittenberry tying this game up I think Beck's going to claim that as a pass. <laughs> That's what I thought it was. And a turnover for Arkansas. The largest lead of the game for Arkansas was 12 points, but UAPB has gotten themselves back in this game. They took the lead briefly a couple of minutes ago, and then Arkansas answered back. Now we're tied. Three-pointer. Good. From Beck as she hits from beyond the arc. Yeah, Beck at 13 now. She's showing out. Her dad's in the stands. He's in his home territory. There's Corey Beck looking on, the former point guard from Arkansas. Can you see how stern and how blank his face looks? That's that's the NBA dad stare. That's how they look the entire <laughs> game. They're deep down, they're happy inside, but that's really what their face looks like the entire game. Held ball. Let's take a look at it again. Yeah, I mean, back. 
just so talented and so confident. Just no one guarding her there. So she just says, you know what, I'm going to pull it up. And she leaves the hand up too. And despite the face, I promise you, dad is, dad is proud. Dad is, dad is smiling hard inside. I love that you know that because your dad was an NBA player. That's so great that he's being all cool, he's being all stern, but you know he's very happy and proud inside. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The face never changes. And then so you always look out. I used to always look at his face, too, from the, from the court. <laughs> That's right. You, yeah, you saw that face a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> an offensive foul called. Have another look at the offensive foul here. And they're gonna call a moving screen. Yeah, it was on Walker, as she was kind of going behind Davenport there and committed that foul. So, Pine Bluff still up by one. Daniels had hit the shot on this end of the court to draw Arkansas within two after that three-pointer from Kariah Beck. Poffenbarger pulls up, too strong. Yeah, great rotation there defensively by the Golden Lions. That's what they want to do, force the Razorbacks into those tough mid-range jumpers. Davenport with a tough rebound. Seemed like some contact, no foul called, but Davenport able to put that offensive rebound back in and then a foul committed as Daniels goes to the rim. Yeah, I definitely agree, Brenda. I thought there might have been some contact there, but hey, I'll take the finish. Look at the elevation, the length there, and the ability to finish. So Pine Bluff, their largest lead of the game is three. They've led by three, three different times during the course of the game. And now it's Michaela Daniels at the free throw line. She's got 15 points and she misses that one. Well, next Sunday, it's a women's basketball doubleheader here on the SEC Network. First at 1 Eastern, it's UL Monroe taking on Alabama in Tuscaloosa. That's followed by Northwestern State and seventh ranked LSU from Baton Rouge at 3 Eastern, 2 Central. Both games can be seen right here on the SEC Network. So Daniels hits one of two. Davenport, what a save to give an extra opportunity to the Golden Lions. Yeah, excellent hustle. You know, Coach Thornton talked to us about Mo Davenport and that she has the ability to really step up, and we have seen that in this game, though she gets called for the foul there, the moving screen, but just watch this save. Yeah, long shots equal long rebounds. She knew that was going out. She didn't give up. Davenport running basically out of bounds. Gets a great save in that extra possession. But she picks up the foul on the illegal screen. That's two fouls now for Davenport. Under five minutes to go. And it's blocked as... McDaniels tries to take it in. Three on one. Nice pass underneath to Beck. And it's the biggest lead of the game for Pine Bluff. And then Spencer throws that one out of bounds as she tries to connect, connect with Dowda. Yeah, the Swiss Army knife, Zay Green, she's so talented. Did do just about anything and anything. I mean this pass. I mean, wow. What an excellent pass by Zay Green, and the Lions are really starting to shake the Razorbacks up offensively. Davenport almost threw that one away, trying to get it back to Green. And how about Green's body control? Because it was good position by Spencer, who was trying to draw the offensive foul, and Green just slid around her. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's veteran play, to have that body control on that attack. Only... A uh, short period of time, they've got to get it across half court or it's going to be a 10-second violation, and Arkansas forces that turnover. And I love that they recognize that, so they amp up the defense for causing that turnover. University of Arkansas Pine Bluff has outscored the Razorbacks 39-20. to
five here in the second half. They were down by 10 at halftime. They chipped away, and it was a one-point game at the end of the third quarter. Pine Bluff was down, and now they've got the four-point lead. The pressure on Arkansas right now not to lose on their home court. This would be the first time University of Arkansas Pine Bluff ever beats Arkansas if they can hold on to this. But there's a lot of game to play. Yeah, well, it all starts with the defense. They're extending out. They're running the Razorbacks off the three-point line. Threes are better than two, so if anything, you want to force them into the paint. They've done a great job not just forcing them into the paint, but forcing them into that mid-range, that tough mid-range jumper. Nice pass inside of Davenport. And then an offensive foul. Boy, Davenport didn't have a lot of room to come down there. Have another look at it. Davenport is getting the ball here. Yeah, I almost thought she didn't get her feet down. It was close, well, didn't have that space to come down, yeah. Scott? Not just a defense, not just an offensive player, but there to draw the foul. And Scott goes to the floor. Up ahead, good block, but no, a foul committed as players going to have to be helped up off the floor. Great pass there by Green. And Spencer with the block, thought it was a foul, but she ran right into the base of the basket. Boy, a collision there as Spencer commits the foul. will send Rittenberry to the line. The officials are going to take a look at it, but this, it looks like just great hustle from Spencer to try to block the shot. Does she go for the ball? It looks like it. But, man, they land hard. Yeah, I thought she went for the ball. I think just all the energy from the force from her going so hard, it was just an accidental collision. Rittenberry has not been to the line very much this year, just three of six coming into the game. She misses that one, her first free throw attempt today. Misses the second, the battle. And Spencer comes away with it. And a back, a 10 second violation, and the officials are going to have to come together. You see Brian Hall and Brenda Pantoja coming together there. At and you can see, it, and, and uh, Mike Neighbors is saying there's no way that shot clock was reset. Boy, it's already running before it looks like Arkansas has possession. And you can see it's it's definitely 10 seconds from where they set it, but I, the shot clock was reset before Arkansas actually had possession. So the officials are going to have to take a look at that. Boy, what a critical time here with just 3.14 remaining. University of Arkansas, Pine Bluff, up by four. They've outscored Arkansas 11 to six here in the fourth quarter after hitting those nine straight three-pointers in the first half, Arkansas. They have gone cold since then from three as just 10 of 32 overall since then. Yeah, let's take a look at the tail of the two halves, Asia. Yeah, I mean, the scoring has drastically went up, a lot more efficiency, a balanced attack, and I think they're just more comfortable in their offense, and it started with their defense. They started to settle into their defense, running Arkansas off the three-point line, disrupting them, which allowed to open things up offensively. So we were being told that there was an error with the, the clock management. It was, as we saw on the replay, 
it was reset too quickly before Arkansas actually had possession. I mean, it was, it was like six, five or six seconds remaining to get across half court when they finally got it in their hands. So that's been corrected. So they'll put 22 on the shot clock. And with Arkansas down by four. Keep in mind, Arkansas is 42 and two all time against the SWAC. They haven't lost to a school in this conference since 1980. And they have the ball stolen away and then Scott commits the foul. Great defensive play by Jalissa Reese, the transfer from Troy. Yeah, it started with that hard hedge. That hard there, uh, hard hedge by Davenport really threw the freshman off, and then it leads to a steal. And Coach Thornton of Arkansas Pine Bluff talked to us about Jalissa Reese, and she said she learned such great defense when she was at Troy. She actually suggests things to me on defense from time to time, and is such a terrific defender. A travel called there on Zay Green. And you mentioned uh, Reese coming from Troy. I mean, all of her transfers that she had coming in, all coming, you know, you talk about Rutgers and then Georgia with Davenport, Zay Green yeah. playing at Tennessee, all, te all players that come from teams that hang their hat on their defense. Talia Scott has some blood on her hand, so they're going to have to get that taken care of before she can come back on the court. Arkansas has been held to just six points, Asia, here in the fourth quarter. Absolutely, getting run off the three-point line, but they don't need the three. I think they should continue, continue attacking downhill. That's where they three free and clean, right? So keep continuing to attack downhill and get to the free throw line. Dude out. Or Dowda, excuse me, missing that one. She is a 40% three-point three shooter and has the green light to take that shot, but couldn't connect this time. Top of the key, no, but another rebound for Pine Bluff and with the clock reset to 20, they're gonna take their time. 21 offensive rebounds in this game for Pine Bluff and 22 second chance points. Four seconds on the clock. Beck, no. And just a 143 remaining for Arkansas. Poffenbarger beyond the arc, got it. It's a one-point game. Okay, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Here. This is a team that can shoot the three ball. The, the three ball will get them back in the game, and that's exactly what happens here. Probing the effort here by Daniels to find Poffenbarger there on the three-point line. That's an excellent play, an excellent find. And I'll tell you what, you got to have that mindset in Mike Neighbors. Philo offensive philosophy, that shooter shoot mentality. You might miss some shots, but you got to keep going at it. You got to keep putting them up. Yeah, they uh, they had missed 14 of their 18 three pointers before Poffenberger uh, connected on that one. And and Arkansas has owned the state. They they played four in-state teams this year, beating Little Rock, Arkansas State, Central Arkansas since. Uh, since Arkansas opened it up to play in-state teams over the last three years, they're 15-0 against the rest of the state. Will Arkansas Pine Bluff break that streak today? Arkansas has drawn it within one with that three-pointer. Yeah, Mike Neighbors knew what he was getting into with this matchup. He has said that this team right here will be their toughest matchup of those in-state opponents. Zay Green out top, being hounded by Poffenbarger. Driving in, it's blocked. Shepard had it blocked. The shot clock has not reset. Shepard from the corner. Shepard hits a big three from the corner and goes up now by four. 
Under a minute to play, Arkansas. Spencer throws it up wildly. And then a whistle. A, call, a timeout is called, but look at this shot from Shepard. And Shepard, that's what she does. She lights it up. The, she provides that spark off the bench. She is one of the best three-point shooters on this team, and none could have been bigger than that one to stretch the lead out by as many as 12 in the third quarter. But this fourth quarter has been owned by Arkansas Pine Bluff. This is an a Arkansas team that we know can shoot threes. So they're going to get the best shot available, and I think they're going to try and look for a quick shot here. So it will be Arkansas's possession. You see the timeouts. Pine Bluff has two. The Razorbacks just one. A couple of fouls to give for Arkansas, so they'll be aggressive defensively when Arkansas Pine Bluff gets the ball. 49.3 remaining. And we know. Okay, see so the officials are going to the sideline right now as the Arkansas fans are calling the hogs. And the officials are going to see when the timeout was called to make sure they have the clock right. And so it remains at 49.3 remaining. Arkansas will inbound it on the baseline. Spencer to trigger it in with 12 on the shot clock. Time is running down. Poffenbarger, four seconds, step back. No, didn't hit the rim. And Pine Bluff gets the rebound. Yes, he's and a couple of... Yeah, a couple of fouls to give, so this will just be an inbounds play for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Still one more foul to give, so Arkansas has to foul quickly. A lot of clock ticking down, and Spencer knowing that she had four fouls, was trying to avoid fouling, but she does, and that will send her to the bench with five fouls. Spencer with just four points and eight rebounds. A tough shooting day for Samara with just one of 11 from the field. Next foul will send the Golden Lions to the free throw line, and uh, actually a turnover for Arkansas Pine Bluff as the ball hit the sideline. Arkansas has to hurry. Scott pulls up. Too strong. Poffenbarger. And he gets away from Scott. Stolen away by Arkansas Pine Bluff. Stolen back by Arkansas. Scott misses. A lot of contact, no foul. Scott is on the floor, and the game will end. The first time in history, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff beats Arkansas as they wow. get their first victory over a Power 5 program in school history. All those tough matchups, the losses, the Power 5 programs that they have had to take on the road. Look, you see it's paid off so much, and this is such a talented team, so much upside. It's going to be exciting to see the damage that they do in the SWAT conference. This was a team, Arkansas Pine Bluff, that was down by 10 at halftime, 42 to 32. They drew back within one at the end of the third quarter. They led by as many as four here late, and that's exactly the margin of victory for Don Thornton and her squad as they celebrate in Bug Walton Arena. A fabulous performance 
with no doubt by Arkansas Pine Bluff. We'll be back to talk to Zay Green on the other side of this break. The 8 of 22 from the field. She made both of her three-pointers. She hit both free throws, nine rebounds. She brought her team in here into enemy territory within the state of Arkansas and got the victory. Congratulations, Zay. Thank what you. does this victory mean to you and your squad pulling off this big win? Um, honestly, it's really a lot. Like, it's a big, big win for us. We really need this going into the SWAT conference. And I think the momentum is going to help us to end the preseason pretty well. And Zay, you know, we've seen you. We know you're a talented player, but you suffered from some injury throughout the course of your career, had ups and downs. And then you come into this season, and we're really seeing your talent shine through. Talk about the, the patience and all the hard work that you put into the offseason leading into this moment. Um, I mean, it was just making sure my knees were strong and then making sure I was in shape, game-ready shape, and able to still look how I looked two years ago and now, now how I look now. It's like there's no difference. So I'm really thankful and I'm grateful, honestly. Say your your team was down by ten at the half. You you chipped away and were down by one in the third quarter. And re really, you owned the fourth quarter. What did it take to come in here to Fayetteville and be able to climb back in this game and get the victory? Um, it was really just having patience and having a lot of grit. Our team never gives up, no matter what the score is. And I know we didn't want to give up, especially here in Arkansas. It felt like a rival, and we felt like we really needed to get this win to help us. So it was just like no back down. We couldn't back down. All right. Well, we, we appreciate you coming by. Congratulations. Go celebrate this victory. All those Power 5 schools that you played this year prepared you, and you got the big victory today. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. And that will get us off the air. It's the first victory against a Power 5 school in Arkansas Pine Bluff history. What a victory here on the road for the Golden Lions, spoiling a little of the holiday spirit in Fayetteville. On behalf of Asia Ellison and our entire SEC network crew, I'm Brenda Van Lingen, the Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff with the upset over Arkansas today.